Hey knitters, welcome back. I'm Jana with Pearl Together and this is part four of the newly updated customizable toe up sock series. So this week we're going to pick up the stitches on the gusset of our heel flap or I'm um, sorry, on the edge of our heel flap in order to create the gusset, which is this like slanty part right here. And then we're gonna narrow everything back down towards the top of the heel. So if you haven't yet measured the top of your ankle, do that and make sure that it's a similar measurement to the ball of your foot so that you'll know that you're gonna be good to go with the same number of stitches around the circumference as you had the ball of your foot. So it should be similar. If it's quite a lot, then you can adjust whether you're going to have the same number of stitches or more. So if it's, you know, an inch bigger, then you're going to want to not decrease as much on the top when we narrow down. Okay. Before we get started with that, though, I want to give a hearty shout out and a big thank you to two new patrons just joining the patron family this week, and that would be Bev and Sandy. Thanks so much for joining me over at patreon.com forward slash pearl together. Check that out if you want to become a patron too, and you can see what I'm offering in trade for your small monthly pledge. All right, let's get started with picking up the stitches along the heel flap. Where we left off last week was at the end of our our heel where we've knitted across and our working yarn is ready to go down the left side of the heel flap, the left side if you're looking at the back. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to do is look for the first chain edge stitch and you can see that's going to be right here. So taking the same needle that's coming through here if you're using magic loop or a new double point or you may even decide that you'd like to use a small crochet hook for this, you're going to go in underneath both legs of that chain stitch and knit right into that. Okay, and now look for the next one, rolling this back toward you to make sure that you can see where these chain stitches are and go in under the next, the two legs of the next one. So again, you want to roll that edge toward you so that you can see, whoops, I didn't catch it there. So you can see the chain edge stitches, the legs of the next one. Oops, let me make sure I'm holding this so that you can see that's hopefully both legs there and are kind of mashed together. This will get easier as you go down the side for sure and it becomes easier to see that you're going under both edges. I might have missed that first one. Let me go back and catch it. Okay. I find that the other side of the heel flap is much easier. There we go. All right now I think I've got both both sides. Okay. The other side of this is a lot easier, meaning this edge, and you'll see why when we get there. But again, you want to make sure that you're getting both legs. So you're going to go under both sets right there, knit right into that. All right, continue down the edge doing that, and I'll show you what we're going to do when we get to the corner down here to prevent any holes that might occur at the corner of your your foot and then going across the instep. Okay, I've picked up the stitches all the way down this side and now I'm at the corner and I'm gonna do one extra stitch here at the corner so that I don't have any holes before I start as I, you know, as I'm joining back in the round between this gusset edge and the instep stitches at the top of the foot. So what I'm gonna do here is like a make one. I'm gonna pick up the bar between and I'm gonna use the other end of my magic loop here to hang on to that and I'm going to knit into the back loop of it to create a half twist and then close any hole that might be there. Okay, now I want that added stitch to be on the same needle as the rest of the gussets. Okay, I'm going to adjust my magic loop and I'm going to knit across, keeping in pattern across the top of the foot stitches or the instep stitches. Now, the what I want to do is make sure that the only stitches that I have on this needle are the instep stitches. Everything else is going to go on this the other half, which is more than half obviously, but if you're using two circulars or you're using a 9 or 10 inch circular, the tiny little ones, uh, make sure that you put markers here at the beginning of the instep stitches and the end of the instep stitches because those need to stay the same number. We're going to be decreasing these away and ending up with our back to our original number that you have, whether that's 72 like me or 64. But put a marker here if you need to, if you're using a circular, or put a marker here, both. Now if you're using double points, just make sure that you arrange your double points in such a way that these are together. Or maybe you have two 
But anyway, just keep these intact is the point. All right, I'm just gonna carry on in pattern across these instep stitches and then we'll go back up the other side. All right, I'm ready to arrange everything so that I can go pick up the stitches here. Okay, so I'm gonna pull through my magic loop for curl that around and I'm gonna go pick up this bar that's in between just like we did before. But if I pick it up from front to back like that, it's just gonna make a large stitch. So I'm gonna go from the back, pick that up and turn it and knit right into that. I'm gonna go ahead and use my other needle to help me here so that I can turn that and knit into it as if it is a regular stitch. All right, so that will help stop any holes from occurring. Now I can see these two legs very clearly, right? That's, it's a lot easier to pick up the stitches coming up this other side because I think you can see where you should go in a little easier to get both legs. Because you can see this at the base right here, there's a little hole right there at the base of those and you can go right under both legs. Now I don't ever count these, I don't worry too much about how many there are because we're gonna decrease everything back to the, um, our, the number of foot stitches we have unless your ankle measurement is different than the ball of your foot measurement. And then you can decide how many stitches you'll need to decrease down to to accommodate your ankle if it's larger or smaller than the ball of your foot. So that is the advantage to this is these are customizable to your foot anatomy, foot and ankle and leg. Whoops. Again, roll that toward you and make sure you're getting both legs of that chain edge stitch. This is going to feel a little bit awkward when we go to, just because it's a little tight, you know, um, that's definitely going to loosen up as we get going. So either knit back straight across here now or do the slip stitch reinforcement. If you're going to continue with the slip stitch reinforcement, you need to be mindful now that we're not purling back. So you're going to have to alternate a plain knit round with a slip stitch reinforcing round because you can't just knit or you can't just, you know, slip the same stitch up and up and up indefinitely. Obviously you'll elongate it way too much and that won't work. So you would need to do your knit round and then the next time you come back circling around you would knit a slip stitch reinforcement round alternating those two. Now I like to combine that with the decrease round so that you have a plain resting round where you're just knitting or you have your action round which is when you'll combine that with your decreases. I'm just going to knit a plain round and you can decide where your new beginning of the round is going to be. I like to make my beginning of the round at the center of the back. Um, but it could be different for you. Maybe if you are doing the slip stitch reinforcement, you'll want to have your beginning of the round be where that section begins. So here's what I'm, here's what I'm saying. My new beginning of the round, I prefer to be in the middle of the back. Okay, so here's my foot. So my beginning of the round will be in the center of the back. But if you're doing that slip stitch reinforcement, then you may want the beginning of your round to be over here so that you know when to begin that reinforcing technique if you choose to do that. So I'm just gonna continue knitting around and then, I'll, then we'll start the decreases. Okay, I've knitted that first plain round. Now I'm on my decrease round or my action round. So I'm gonna knit to three stitches before the end of this left side of my gusset. Oops. Then I'm simply gonna do a knit two together, knit one. Adjust your magic loop or whatever it is you're using. Knit across your, in keeping in pattern, knit across your instep stitches. And then we'll do our other decrease over here. So the idea of the decrease is that, is that you have a right leaning decrease that's gonna to point toward the back of the heel or to where the leg of the sock will be. So it's gonna point this direction. And then on this side, your left leaning decrease will also point toward the back of the heel or toward the leg. All right, so I'm gonna stay in pattern across my instep stitches here. All right, now I'm back to the other gusset after knitting across the instep. I'm gonna knit one and slip, slip, knit. So slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then knit those two together. Being careful not to split a stitch, like I just about did. And then just knit. I'd give that a good little tug to tighten up anything. I always do that at the corners, I think. 
Um, and then we're just going to knit back up to the beginning of your round. So that's our decrease round. We're going to alternate that with a plain round. So I have this all uh, written out for you, and I'll put a link to that down below in the video description. So be sure to print that if that's helpful. So we're just going to alternate those two rounds until we get back down to the desired number of stitches for the ankle and leg. So let me work those two rounds for a while and then you'll be able to see what it looks like. I've worked those two rounds alternating a decrease round with a plain knit round for, oh, I don't know, an inch or so, just so I can show you what it looks like. Um, let me get this magic loop, part of my magic loop out of the way so you can see. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out here, and I'm going to use this little pin as a pointer, if that's helpful, is how you can tell, you know, if you set your knitting down and you walk away and you come back and you're not sure if this is going to be a decreasing round or a plain round, um, I'm going to show you how to read your knitting a little bit so you can tell. So let's say the back of, you know, this is the beginning of the round, wherever that is for you, and I don't know, is this going to be a decrease round or a plain round? So it might be helpful to look a little more closely and you can see plainly right there that that is a knit two together. You can see both of those loops right there that were knitted together last time. So what I have going on next is just a plain knit round, keeping in pattern, of course, over the end step. Um, alternatively, if you want to look on the other side to see what that looks like, that is very clearly a slip slip knit. So you can see those are alternating. It's, it's really evident on the slip slip knit side, the left leaning decreases where you had a decrease and a plain round and a decrease and a plain round and so forth. Okay, so the idea here is to carry on alternating your decrease round and your plain knitting round until keeping in pattern on your instep with instep with whatever pattern you've chosen to do until you're back down to decreased your gusset down to the desired number of stitches. So for me, that's going to be 72. Okay, I am finished with my decreasing rows and I'm back down to my 72 stitches. So now I need to continue the pattern around the back of the leg of my sock. So remember how we ended up, how I split the pattern of knit four purl two, knit four purl two, and I split that with a purl here and a purl on the other side to complete the pattern. So now what I'm gonna do is the same thing and I'm gonna begin the pattern on the back of the leg with a purl stitch. And then I'm just gonna carry on with my knit four purl two all the way around the back of the leg. So then I'll have my continuity, I'll have continuity of the pattern all the way around. So I'm going to purl one and knit four, and then purl two, just like I have been on the front. So you can see that's what I did with this first sock, and I'm just going to continue knitting this all the way up as far as I have yarn for. All right, so I'll see you next time, and I'll show you how to bind off after you've made the leg the length that you would prefer. If you're making super high socks, you might have to adjust for the calf muscle, which would be, you know, somewhere up here if you have that much yarn and you're making, like, knee socks. Um, post Put a post in the group if you want to know how to accommodate, you know, that calf muscle, or if you need to increase here, um, we can talk about that. So post in the Ravelry group or the Facebook group if that applies to you and you need some help determining what to do there. Otherwise, this is pretty good ribbing and you can just knit straight on through. All right, I'll see you next time for the bind off. I hope you found that tutorial helpful. If you have any questions at all, post in the Ravelry group or the Facebook group. I'll be happy to help you there. Go ahead and knit through your pattern to the leg and we'll see what that all looks like next time when I show you how I like to do the sewn bind off. All right, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.